Good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the AccuStats Arena at Caesars Southern Indiana for the 2020 Derby City Classic. This is the 22nd edition of Pool's most exciting event and sponsored by Diamond Billiard Products, Simona's Cloth, and Cyclop Pool Balls. We also want to recognize our great partnership with Master Chalk and also with Outsville for also providing the equipment that we're using here all week. And lastly, before we introduce the players, we want to again thank each and every one of you because you are the most important part of the Derby City family. So with that being said, let's get back to the one pocket division. 365 players began in one pocket. There's 137 left going into this round. These gentlemen are about to play a round number four match. Let's introduce them to you right now. From Trinity, Florida. He's a former Super Billiards Expo one pocket players champion. He's also the 2013 Derby City one pocket champion. Sponsored by Miyuchi, the Pool of School and Enviro Assessments. Please welcome the Prince of Pool, Corey Duell. His opponent from Bislig, Surigao del Sur in the Republic of the Philippines. He's a two-time U.S. Open one-pocket champion. He's also a two-time West Coast Challenge one-pocket champion among his long list of accomplishments. Sponsored by Club Billiard, known as RoboCop. Please welcome Dennis Okuyo. Okay, gentlemen, please go ahead and lag for the break if you would. 60-second shot clock. Cue ball fouls only. We're going to send it upstairs to the booth now to Mark Wilson and a five-time Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Go ahead, Mark. Next up, we have the inventiveness of Corey Duell, opposed by the player that has complete command of all aspects pool, Dennis Orcolo. Mark Wilson and Danny DiLiberto here on the call. Welcome aboard, Danny. Thank you. And you described Philippine players when you just described Orcolo because they all have a lot of talent, knowledge. They learned from someone. Of course, they had Efren too. Efren learned from someone else. Yeah, Efren had one mentor named Ramon. I played him when I was in the Philippines. He was kind of a funny guy, but he was good at rotation. Efren took what he learned there and then added quite a bit to it. Corey Duels won the lag. Big advantage, Danny mentioned. Very in big. The previous match. These are races to three. Corey's breaking once again in an unconventional manner. Super slick cloth, though. That might have something to do with it. He doesn't want the corner ball to kick out. A couple different rule changes here. If a ball goes on the break, it doesn't count. And they re-rack. Oh, that was not a good break. In the event that two players go into the negative side, uh, the balls are negated, meaning that uh, if it's negative one, negative one, the score is actually zero, zero. Yeah, I think Okola could bank this ball because when you cut it, it's going to get the proper left-hand English it needs. I think he's got a chance to make this run some balls. And the problem is if he misses it, he's going to sell the bank on the 15 if he goes Maybe. heavy into the 12. Well, where does the ball go when it misses? Might still be in the way. Hit it pretty good. It's in the area. <laughs> well, he's got to give him this ball. Yeah, it's hard to concede this ball and then do anything productive for yourself. Yeah, you want, I like making this and putting him as far on the end rail as he could. Let him have the long, whatever the angle. It's not a gimme shot anyway. No, he doesn't really. As long as there's no dead ones, don't stay right there. Go all the way. No, see, I don't like that. Gave him too, too much of a chance to get out of it. And I want to tell you, guys like Eddie Taylor and Bugs, 
would mm-hmm. bank that ball. They don't care about it. You know, you're not selling out because they figure to make the bank. Bugs was the great banker of one pocket. Eddie Taylor was the great banker of all things. Well, he's not going to... Well, they're not all Eddie Taylor. Mm. That was a sellout. I don't understand that one. That was an odd uh, circumstance. Oh, he can lose the game from there. What is that, the seven ball? Six ball. The six ball? I might not shoot that. I might shoot something else first. Because he's got his choice of shots. Well, he played for the bank. That's unusual. Corey Duell, the Prince of Pool. I don't know who named them that, but in the old days, handsome Danny Jones, I said, Puck it. Who named him the handsome Danny? Because he wasn't handsome. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he named himself someone no. named him before Fats could <laughs> oh, yeah. well Corey scored a couple balls but he does not have much here no well he's got to move for sure Yeah, he was just happy to get out of the inning. See, you couldn't leave Bugs these kind of banks. He made them. You know the 10 ball there? Yeah. Bugs made all of these. You couldn't leave them that. And Danny means the 12 ball, but I know what oh, you mean. Oh, the 12 ball, yeah. He's just talking about the ball right next to the cue ball. Well, he's going to just play safe. That might be a scratch. No rail. I know you people say you hit a ball, but you got to hit a rail after you hit the ball. So he owes one. Yeah, he doesn't have too many places to go here. Might have to just be happy to do something safe without giving up a shot, because he's going to get the worst of it from here. And he knows it. Just taking the foul? Yep. Yes.
And it's going to lightly rub off the 12, it looks like. Try to freeze him on the pile. He's going to do it. Good shot. Boy, what a good shot is right. Now, Dennis was on the first foul. Uh, Corey is on a foul now, so he's not going to be able to just continuously take fouls going backwards. Well, I think three in a row you lose. That's why. Yep. So Dennis is off his foul, but Corey's still on his. But you want to explain the new rule about both people in the hole? I did. Yeah, if both people are minus one, then it wipes it out, and you're back to zero, zero. Dennis is looking to see if he made sure that the four ball wouldn't go. Now Corey's looking at the four. I don't like that shot. That's not going to gain anything. Yeah, if Tennis can bank the four or maybe even kick the four if he needs to and get the cue ball back into the pile where it's at now. He just conceded, it to get the, conceded the ball to get back into the pile. Or he took a foul intentionally. And he put the cue ball in a real good place. So that was a valuable intentional foul. We're looking at the stack here to see if there's anything there for him. Well, it hasn't changed since the very beginning. And he's going to fan it and go all the way up. I think. Oh, he shot at it, and it goes. Look at that shot. <laughs> Good shot. He's got a shot, too. Oh, it sure was. That was a really nice shot. I didn't nice think shot. it passed. 
But he did, and he controlled the cue ball very well. Yes, he did. Oh, look at that. He doesn't have a shot, but he opened some more. Does he have a bank? I don't know. If he doesn't, he, he's got problems. Yeah, he looks like he's banking at this. I'm sure he's banking at this. Didn't make it. Well, I think he's got to give him the ball hanging to one. Can't shoot at the bank. First of all, it doesn't pass. You got to give him this, this ball. That yeah. ball's a threat. The ball that started Corey's inning last frame with the bank, that was really some kind of shot because that changed the proportion of the oh, complexion it, of the game. Yeah, it gave him the edge. And that's what you said, get long. Yeah, the drink. it's going in a drink. It's in. But that's what you had to do. But now he's in trouble. Not a real lot of trouble because Corey doesn't have a ball that he could shoot at. Yeah, Dennis is negative one. up into the stack. Chat. Good shot. Boy. Well, this is kind of what happens when you play, you know, safe on the wrong side of the pile. Is quite often you you find yourself in just as bad or worse of a spot. And Nick Varner loves this kind of game because he figures eventually he'll outsmart the guy. Mm -hmm. And usually he does. Oh, we're going to take more scratches.
Barry a jet. Well, they claim a guy named Hayden Lingo invented this game of one packet. I knew him. I'm not. I can't verify that he did invent it, but the old-time players say he does. And he was a good mover, of course. He, inv he invented the game. I think Marshall Carpenter Squirrel said that he did, and he played very well. Did Hayden Lingo come to Johnson City? Yes, yes. There's a question here by Corey. I'm not sure what the question is. <laughs> Think of it. I'm trying to imagine what he's asking. Ken Schumann clarified it. Very good shot. Good speed. Very good shot. Dennis has kind of found that one pocket is his favorite game these days, even though he was known as a rotation player. But the last couple of years, he says he prefers one pocket. Well, I was a straight pool player, and I that I agree. One pocket is the best game when you get old, when you can't pocket as well, because you can win in one pocket without making balls. Well, Dennis likes it, and he can still pocket real well. Kind of doubled him up there on the 11 and the 1 so that Corey can't shoot at his hole. Well, could you fan the 10 towards, what is that, the 6? The 12, yeah. The 12 towards the oh, 6. The 12 towards the 6 and control the cue ball? That's a good shot. I think that's what he's going to try to do. No, he just wanted to get through the inning. Might have left the, no. He didn't leave a bank. No, that was an okay shot. Not yet. Yeah, he could bank this ball off the pile and go forward. Well, they're not... They're feeling each other out and they're respecting the other person because they're not doing anything real aggressive.
this seems just a little bit flat. I guess he would introduce a little bit of draw. No, oh, he was able to go that thin. Wow, great shot, Corey. <laughs> this is how you slow down, Dennis Arcolo, right there. Oh, it was a foul. I thought he rubbed that ball. He did. He, didn't he go off the six ball? I don't understand. I thought he did, but, you know, maybe I guess double he hit didn't. It. Maybe object ball fouled or double hit it. I don't know what happened there. Now we're going to have another foul. Dennis is now negative three. Well, that was another foul, right? Yeah, and a good one. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It goes right up there in blocks where Dennis can't just rub off. He's got to go the other direction now. See, I don't know if Shaw's going to play this game of one pocket because he wants to shoot. He doesn't have the patience to do all this. Right. We don't think anymore. I mean, if it, it might be newfound. Dennis is going another ball in the hole. <laughs> Kenny's going to run out of change. He has four coins by Dennis's pocket. Looks like Corey's just thinking about just bumping the eight ball oh, down yeah, table. Oh, yeah, he's not going to take a scratch here. He's just sizing up if he kicked at that, but that'd be pretty iffy. You Although there's, sell out a bank. there's a lot of ways that something good could happen, but there's more ways that something bad could happen. Now he's looking at just kicking in between the five and ten, just take another foul. Well, they'll both be negative then. So what happens? Uh, Corey will go to zero, and Dennis will be minus three. Before he takes a foul here. Yeah, yep, that's what he's going to do. Try to kick the cue ball in between the five and ten. He's going power. The nine oh, ball. he had a dead one. Good shot. Wow. <laughs> well, he's got a chance to get all the way out now. Yeah, if the 10 ball passes, that would really be handy. I don't know that it does. Here from the overhead, it's hard to tell. We'll, we'll find oh, out. Oh, he's more. got a lot of balls that go. You don't have to right. think of the 10. Yeah, he can spin around and get to, I think it's six, right? Yeah. Or is it seven? No, you're right, six. 
Yeah, that's where he got. He didn't quite. Oh, maybe the, the ten six. does go. Here's Let's a little see second the dead look. one here. Doesn't look dead. Well, after the shot, it does. Well, he played it, so it must have been obviously dead. But he didn't play a very good position. He's going to play the combination now. So we know the 10 does not go. Well, that combination. <laughs> yeah, what kind me. of a combination is it? I don't think it is. He's going to lose the cue ball. Oh, he played the two. Oh, he played it off the rail. Combo carom. Oh, he's got a <laughs> shot. Did I say something about the inventiveness of Corey Duell? Oh, here? he's creative, all right. <laughs> he's going to get right out here. Wow. <laughs> he, he got in there and new, uh, countered everything that Dennis Arcolo did. Or he's playing for three. They're open. Well, the ten goes now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Had to work around there a while. So he found a dead one in the stack. Then he played a combination carom shot. And then he ran out after taking many fouls, <laughs> many, many, many maneuvers there. Corey Duell leads this match one game to zero. Corey is such a, a forward and progressive thinker, and uh, it's almost like he lives in an alternate reality. He does. His thinking. You're you know, right. <laughs> the other day I was talking to him. He, we were just walking down the hall, and he was talking about his match with Bustamani, and he, he listed four different scenarios, none of which is what happened, <laughs> and I didn't dispute it, but <laughs> if he doesn't get all the roles and I play bad, I could still win, and if he plays bad and gets all the roles, I would win easy, and then <laughs> he had five or six things he'd been going through his mind, and I just thought, uh -huh, oh, yeah, yeah, see what you're saying there. Didn't understand hardly a word of it, but but I like Corey. Uh-oh. Minus one. Kenny's going to have to get his change back out. Time out. And I think Corey could shoot at the two. No, he doesn't have the two. He's got a few other ones that are better. Which ones do you mean besides the two? I don't think there's anything with those. All right, everybody, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back. Okay, everybody, we're back, ready to go. Danny and I have been just uh, considering what will Corey do, ball in hand behind the head string. He could cut the two ball towards his pocket and play offense. Dennis has the 14 right over his pocket. Looks like he's going to shoot it. Yeah, and he can get out a little flatter than I thought, so you might be right. I think it's definitely worth it if he can cut it in from yeah, there. Yeah, he can get right out here. He can, well, it can turn out quite favorably. I agree. He hasn't made up his mind yet. Here we go, two ball. He made it, but oh, he hit a ball, and he, he didn't get position. Now it turned out to be a bad shot. Mm -hmm. I didn't think he was going to hit a ball after the two. I thought he can go one rail into the eight. He's in trouble now. 
Now we might see the four rail kick. I don't know, but he might be able to bank. Well, yeah. No, he doesn't he does. have a bank. I was gonna say bank the five into the stack. No, you gotta get behind those two balls. Those mm -hmm. are a big threat there. Uh, I completely agree. Well, he's doing something else. Took a scratch. Oh, I don't know about that. Now this ball will spot up. Yeah, Ocala will be banking. Dennis is looking like uh, he wants to hit the 10 into the 8 and maybe pin the cue ball to the 7 there. Even even risking, take, or is he drawing back? He's drawing back. Oh, no, he, he miscued. <laughs> Look at Corey's come out of this good yeah, again. He got a shot. <laughs> yeah, Dennis yeah, looked at his tip. that was a bad shot. Well, he miscued. He was, I mean, you can see the eight almost went, so it wasn't a bad shot, but when he miscued, it was. Well, a miscue is a bad shot. Fair enough. You know what a miscue means? Missed the cue ball. Corey well, had, he's got to shoot. Corey has the seven ball. Well, does the two pass? Can he go to the two here? Oh, he tried, but he didn't shoot hard enough. I don't know what he was trying. <laughs> he had a chance to go to the two, didn't he? I thought so, too. Uh, I don't know what happened there. That was a little peculiar. Oh, he's in big trouble now. Yeah, this is gonna be, it's hard to even extract the eight without giving up something. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. So he's winding up to rearrange the furniture here by the 10 off the stack. If he would have hit it harder, I think he had it. Well, we're going to see Dennis go to work. Yeah, Dennis needs nine. <laughs> this is this is his preferred part of the game right here. I think it's time to play the combination, don't you? Yep. Yeah, you can't monkey around here. He's got to do some damage. Oh, all these balls open. It is funny how they get arranged, though. It's still difficult to run. Oh, he got funny. Does that ball pass? No matter what, he'll be able to tuck and bring the cue ball underneath the two on the other side, so even if he should miss. And he can play the combination on the 14 while he's doing that if he doesn't want to go right for the pocket. Well, he could bank the two at the ball, too. But he's kind of jacked up, and it's kind of in that odd zone, too, so I don't know. Well, he's just going right at it. He's not even bothering trying to tuck the cue ball behind the two. Good shot. Mm -hmm. Thirteen on the fourteen here. Good shot. Okay. Got a little weird. Yeah, it looks like he's only got a combination. 
unless he wants to try to just glide that five ball along the rail because it is brand new cloth, slippery enough that it might accept it. He could also play it off the back of the 13, but the 13 is not just hanging, so I don't think that's that great of an option. Yep, combination he's looking at. Oh, he played it off the off the rail. Corey got the best of it again. <coughs> he didn't get enough balls. He needed nine. Corey's got a chance to get a bunch. Yeah, I even said that 13 was up pretty high for that type of a shot. And he hit it pretty well. Well, Corey's playing for six balls from here. for the 10 ball next. Might even come across for the one. Nope, the 10. Well, he can go to the 13 now. I think that's the 13, right? Yes. He can go to it. Yeah. Oh, now you can go. I don't know what ball that is. That's the one ball that oh, he most can go likely. To the one. He can go to the one right now. For two. Yeah. He can go on. He can get on the 11, I think. Well, he's had hit so thin, though, Danny. Oh, yeah, but it's going to glance. Okay. You were right. You were right. Boy, he, he overcut the one and still held the cue ball too much for the 11, so you were absolutely right. Very routine shot here, game ball. Yeah, he's on the hill, I think, in this hits Duel. break, right? Yeah. Uh, quality rack there. He's shooting at the game and match. <laughs> There's our scoreboard brought to you by Qtex Synergy. Another quality product from Qtech. Yeah, Q Tech is a good sponsor of pool. Corey still stays out there where he didn't get a good result on his first break. That cue ball's way off the rail. Whatever conventional strategy is, whatever proper logic dictates, Corey Duell defies. Yeah, you're it's right. Just whatever. The corner ball is not even going, the, the opponent's corner ball is not going towards his pocket, but yet Corey persists with some kind of a non traditional approach and has made it work to great effect. Not just in this match, but all of his matches. He's always doing something of this nature.
boy, what a nice shot that was by Dennis. Well, Corey can bank this 11 ball right back. Yeah, I don't think there's a dead one, so he can right. do this. He overcut it. It's a threat, though, but he, it won't be staying there long. Well, I think Dennis might be in a spot where he almost has to kick at it, though. You can't shoot straight at it and I, knock it away? I can't tell. The 14. I think he could. Yeah, we'll find out. Yeah, I think he of, could knock it on his side. Okay, expect expect Corey to take a foul now and just get the cue ball on the other side of the stack, maybe two cushions. I don't think he has to take a foul. Okay. I think he can go all the way to the end rail safe off this ball. I don't think he really wants to rub that 11 away from the pocket, though. Well, he's not going to rub it far or hit the paint. Yeah, I don't think he needs to take a scratch here. I'd like to get the cue ball right over there by the 13 and the 10 if he could, right up against him. Oh, he's a little light on the speed. Corey took a foul. In an effort to just try to get that positional advantage here. Dennis is going to take a foul back, or maybe willing to take a foul if he doesn't just thread in behind him. Oh, he might have made the cue ball. That's going in. No, it isn't. <laughs> Perfect speed. Now Corey has a hard time taking a foul because he's blocked on the nose of the corner pocket. Look how deep that is. Oh, Cole is very fortunate the oh. ball didn't fall. I yeah. thought it was in. But it also took away the two rail <laughs> take a foul shot back where Corey could get that cue ball in a good spot. This is that was a very damaging shot because now Corey may have to rub one of those balls away from his pocket. No, he can shoot one straight on to the side rail and go forward. I don't know. Let's see what he does. Well, he's blocked behind the ear. You know, he, he's now okay. He just shot it in. Very odd spot. Garcolo <laughs> got that cue ball. Yeah. You very seldom see a guy take an intentional foul by pocket scratching. Can't even remember the last right. time I saw that. You see a lot of intentional fouls, but I don't ever remember an intentional foul by scratching in the pocket unless there was an opponent's ball hanging and he was knocking it in and taking a foul. Now Dennis is going to hit the 14 and try to drag the cue ball in behind the 11 and 3 here. Open up the furniture. Oh, great hit. Great hit. Very productive shot. Really? Now Corey has nowhere to go. Yeah. That, that changed the dynamic of this rack. Yeah, good replay there. Great control, very damaging. The big shot, though, uh, Dennis was very fortunate to pin Corey behind the ear of the pocket. And that kick, it looked like he was going to scratch into the corner.
pretty good shot. The three and the if four the are dead. Of, yes, yeah. it does. He might be able to make them from here. Yeah. Yeah, he can cut that ball thin and make it. I think that's what he's going to do. That ball passes. Which it did. Dennis takes a look at the five and the four to see if he can do something with that down the way. If he can, then, then the rack becomes imminently uh, available to run. Well, does he have any dead ones? They look that's, close. That's what I'm saying, the five and the four. Maybe it's the uh, 15 and six. Uh, let's see, we got the overhead. Yeah, they're all close. Very hard to tell from here. It looks like the 15 might be just headed just a little bit too low to the corner pocket. Shooting the 13. Oh, he, he's got something in mind there. It's either the four ball or the 15 ball. No, he's going right to the other. Apparently, neither one of them goes. That was weird. He shot that in and drifted the cue ball out there as if one of them does go. He's still looking at it. But I think he's done looking. Now, what's he doing here? He, now he might be playing the combination. It's hard to tell. It seemed like he had a plan when he moved the cue yeah, ball he's there. Gonna, he's shooting the combination. Oh, oh they, both of them are go, going. <laughs> they got in each other's way. Oh, look at Corey. He's smiling. He's oh, Corey to the can table. win the match right here. <laughs> uh. Corey's saying, okay. I gotta... It's amazing neither one went. They were both dead. <laughs> they were both racing to the pocket and then got there just at the same time and kissed themselves away. Oh, look at all the balls going for, yeah. for Corey. <laughs> so now it's going to be ball management here for Corey. That's what it is. And Corey's really smooth. He barely hits the balls and gets maximum effect. I, don't, I have not seen another player hit the balls as softly as Corey does on a consistent basis. And he's changed that in the last year and a half to try to minimize unforced errors. And hey, let's see how those two balls didn't go. They were both dead. Look at this. Look, they clashed. <laughs> Look at the speed. Look at that. They got in each other's way. I think he's going all the way out. Uh, Look, yeah. they all they all pass. What did he need? Seven or eight? I think he needs six now. Yeah, six from here. for five. Is he going up table or back for the... the I think one? you go up table. He might hit the balls. No, he did yeah, all right. He has the one here. Oh, no, he got the ten in the way. He's got nothing. He can't be shooting the combination now. That's why I thought you go forward on that shot. That's it. That was a bad spot. To, oh, man. He had the game in hand. He can't be shooting a combination. Okay, well. Let's see here. Now he's looking at a combination shot on the one. He'd have to bet the entire game on that shot because Dennis will run out. 
Yeah, you With can't shoot range. this. You can't shoot it. Although, when you're running out, you you tend to gamble when you think you should have got more. Oh, he's shooting off the ball. Look at that hit. He made it. What a shot. Great shot. What a shot. <laughs> he, he bet the game he on did. that. He absolutely bet the entire game on that shot. Now he's got to cash it in, though. Cannot have a letdown. Oh, there it is. Playing for two. I tell you, it's unusual to beat Dennis this easily in any game. I don't know that it was easily. Corey kind of forced no. the issue with some really creative well, stuff. Well, three nothing is pretty easy. Oh, well, the, th the score sounds that way, but if anybody thinks it's easy, latch on to Dennis Orcolo. He is available. Look how good Corey's played. Outstanding Dennis uh, graciously offers his hand in concession, and Corey Duell advances. Really good match there, wasn't it, Danny? Yeah, a yeah. lot of stuff happened there. Very entertaining. And, yeah, and well, how about the combination where both balls clashed and neither one went? And then the bigger shot <laughs> here That's in the what last. beat him. That, the carom that Corey just made when he was trapped, and you were saying he can't shoot the combination, so he played the carom. That was up. That was a diamond, more than That's a diamond a away, shot. of course. And he played it comfortably and with the right speed to get out. And uh, you know uh, the inventiveness of Corey neutralized the accuracy of Dennis Arcolo. This has been World Class Pool brought to you by AccuStats. Thank you again for joining us today and stay tuned for our continuing coverage of the Derby City Classic. So long for just a while. Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with a revolutionary X-Shock dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum cue control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters. Introducing the patented Simonis X1 Chalk Dust Removal Tool. 
In order to keep billiard cloth playing like new, it needs efficient cleaning. With that in mind, Simonis devised and developed a totally innovative accessory, the Simonis X1. Now, you don't need a brush that pushes chalk dust around the table or into the weave, or a vacuum that can stretch and damage cloth if used improperly. The Simonis X1 quickly and quietly extracts chalk dust from the cloth and retains chalk particles in its revolutionary high-tech structure. How? The Simonis X1 works using static electricity and capillary action. Apply light pressure and use a rapid back and forth motion instead of the exaggerated pressure which is needed with a brush. The X1 gets the job done quickly, quietly, and efficiently. After cleaning the table and cushions, you can use the Simonis X1 to delicately brush the playing surface in parallel lines in order to give the cloth a well-kept and groomed appearance. The high-tech textile structure of the Simonis X1 possesses a high absorption capacity and can easily retain the dust of half a cube of chalk. That's a lot of chalk. Cleaning the Simonis X1 is easy. You can release the dust absorbed by the high-tech textile structure to restore its initial effectiveness. To do this, you can vacuum the face of the Simonis X1 or simply beat or slap the underside of the Simonis X1 with your hand to release the dust. It's as simple as that. Thank you. We hope you enjoy the revolutionary new Simonis X1.